はカイドウをぶっ倒しに行くインドヴァーストエンカラフォーワールドワンピース The Straw Hat Pirates have created a legendary reputation not only for their daring adventures but for their moments of pure badassery But what are the ultimate moments where the Straw Hat Pirates have flexed their powers to the fullest From Zoro's jaw-dropping swordsmanship to Luffy's glorious display of his gears We'll be enumerating the top 20 Straw Hat flexes in One Piece Starting off with the Straw Hats' epic display of power when they destroyed the Tori Gate, their first obstacle when they were going to face Kaido. Now, this isn't just any gate, it's a small fortress with a massive Tory gate looming over it, heavily guarded by Kaido's men. But there's nothing impossible for our straw hat pirates who follow the mess around and find out strategy. And let me tell you, it works every single time. Our boy Luffy literally dropped the sun on the guards guarding the Tory gate, completely destroying it. While the other straw hats helped take down the gate, Luffy was the real star of the show, and the pun is intended there, okay? I absolutely love how Zoro and Sanji move to the side in sync and let Luffy do the job. Even though they're all Always bickering like an old married couple. When they get serious, you know shit's about to go down. And their pose at the end, absolutely epic. You can use it for wallpaper, I'm not kidding. Don't believe me? Go watch it for yourself. <laughs> Next up, we have our beloved navigator Nami, who flexed hard on Khalifa, an agent of CP9. Even though we don't have a lot of badass moments for Nami in the anime, this one always hits hard. Now, it's a proven fact that Khalifa is much more stronger than Nami, but Nami is smart, and that's what gives her an edge over Khalifa, and she's able to finish her off. Who needs brute strength when you have brains, right? Thanks to Nami's weather controlling abilities, she fries Khalifa with her thunderbolt. Khalifa tasted defeat because of her overconfidence. Remember, kids, never underestimate your opponent, even if it's someone like Nami. Khalifa shouldn't have stood there like a dummy, staring right into Nami's brewing thunderbolt. She might have Survived otherwise. And the look on her face when she realized she'd been tricked by Nami, so satisfying. You see, when Nami says it's going to rain, it is going to rain. <laughs> When it comes to defending their friends, Straw Hats take it to the next level. They can let anything pass but not have one of their friends in danger. Their rage becomes a force of nature and no opponent can overpower them. After seeing Usopp in a really bad state after his confrontation with the members of the Frankie House, the rest of the Straw Hats went out to avenge their friend and destroyed their enemies along with their entire house. Now, the beauty of this scene is that none of the Straw Hats acted like a leader here. They were each so legitimately pissed that they walked together as equals, a united front of pure righteous fury. Always remember, kids, you mess with one straw hat, you mess with them all. And they don't just get even, they go above and beyond. Also, we know stuff is about to go down when we see Chopper angry. This scene is a prime example of how epically badass the straw hats become when you mess with their Nakama. <laughs> Talking about badass, we have one hell of a badass member of the Straw Hats, Jinbei. He joined the Straw Hats during the Wano Country arc after severing ties with Big Mom. And let's just say, he brought some serious muscle to the team too. During his fight with Who's Who, Jinbei lost it after Who's Who mocked Jinbei's race. Big mistake though, bro literally twisted Who's Who's finger when he was attacking Jinbei with his finger pistols, and he only activated his Haki at that point. On top of that, he blew the little kitty away without even touching him. That's one hard flex to be honest. Jinbei really made Who's Who look like fodder. Seriously, the sheer power and confidence he exuded were off the charts. 
I love the fact that Jinbei is a whale shark fishman, one of the most gentle giants of the sea, yet he's so strong and demonic when he needs to be. Let's all have a moment of silence for Who's Who's Tail, which Jinbei turned into a temporary doormat. Ouch, that had to sting. Usopp, along with Nami, is one of the weakest members of the Straw Hat Pirates. However, when push comes to shove and his friends are in danger, Usopp proves he's worth his weight in gold. When he saw Luffy and Law almost getting turned into toys at the hands of Sugar, he took matters into his own hands and attempted to take an impossible shot at Sugar. Luckily, he activated his haki and shot at Sugar with precision. The dude scared and traumatized Sugar with his shot that took the shape of Usopp's ridiculous face. Talk about turning the tables with style. It's impressive how he, of all other Straw Hats, awakened his haki before Robin. He sees the whole chessboard instead of focusing on the piece he's faced with. Usopp really is a brilliantly created character and also very underrated. <laughs> Moving on, we have Luffy who took Doflamingo on a tour in his own country. Yes, you're allowed to laugh at this one. So apparently Luffy feels the need to activate his fourth gear in order to defeat Doflamingo. Doflamingo, on the other hand, laughed at Luffy for looking like a balloon. Poor guy judged a book by its cover and paid the price for it. To be honest, all of us had to accept this form without question. But hey, it's pretty strong as it absolutely destroyed someone as strong as Doflamingo. And those glasses of Doflamingo's, they deserve their own spin-off series because they survived everything. You agree with me, right? Doflamingo's first mistake was messing with Luffy's crew, his second mistake, underestimating Luffy's gear for, and his final mistake, disrespecting the future Pirate King. You don't mess with the Captain of the Straw Hats and expect to walk away unscathed, you know? This moment is undeniably one of Luffy's most epic flexes that simply had to be on our list. Talking about epic flexes, Sanji has his fair share of some of the most badass flexes in the One Piece universe and his confrontation with Queen is one of them. This was one of the most anticipated fights that made us fall in love with Sanji even more. Bro ditched his raid suit and still handed Queen a beating. He absolutely crushed Queen using his infamous both burst move, sending him flying backwards and out of his way. Sanji's swagger in this scene was off the charts. Dude didn't need any flashy gears or gimmicks, just pure leg powered fury. Imagine how painful it is to be hit by blue flames that are a dozen times hotter than normal flames. Anyway, let's keep our spotlight on praising Sanji who was an absolute beast during this fight. Some fans have even suggested that this Sanji is hotter than Gear 5 Luffy. Drop a comment and tell me what you think about that spicy take then. Despite being overlooked by many fans, Brooke proves to be the hidden heartbeat of the Straw Hat Pirates as he takes the risk of challenging someone as powerful as Big Mom. The skeleton sure has guts, which says a lot since he doesn't have any. Now, many of you may know that Brooke has no fear, but I'd say that dude just knows how to overcome his fear. I mean, who else could look death in the eye and still manage to stand upright in front of it? Brooke knew he had zero chance of winning against Big Mom, but he still challenged her, and that actually earned him a bit of respect from Big Mom herself. She didn't say anything offensive to Brooke, knowing fully well that she could turn his bones to ashes in a heartbeat. But imagine killing someone who's already dead. Doesn't make sense, does it? Still, this was one epic flex from Brooks's side that's going to be remembered by every One Piece fan.
Let's talk about one of the strongest members of the Straw Hat Pirates. This guy is the true definition of badass. He not only remains cool under pressure, but also faces his enemies head on with a look that says, bring it on. One of the most noticeable abilities of Zoro is his observation haki, which lets him detect any danger directed towards him or his crew. Seriously though, bro can see threats even in his sleep. Take that time when Gaku tried to destroy the Thousand Sunny with one powerful strike. Zoro was like, not on my watch. In a legendary flex, Zoro parried Gaku's attack effortlessly. I'm still laughing at Gaku's overconfidence. Dude didn't know what he was getting himself into. This scene is the pure definition of waking up and choosing violence. Gaku did the breakdance moves mid-air for nothing, and let's not forget the look on Gaku's face. He went from, I'm about to wreck this ship, to, oh no, not again, in record time. Seriously, bro should have remembered his Asurai experience with Zoro. Talk about PTSD. Gaku should really learn from his mistakes. Next up, we have Luffy's unaware conqueror's hockey moment that exuded pure badass vibes. Now, Conqueror's Haki is something you can't attain through rain. It's something that comes to you naturally, and it's said that it comes to only those who have the qualities of a king. Luffy, our lovable captain, busts out this Haki during his desperate attempt to save Ace from execution. Sengoku, the big shot fleet admiral, immediately recognizes what's happening and stands there in utter shock because, let's be real, he might have Ace, but now there's an even bigger threat on the battlefield, running around unnoticed and unintentionally flexing his kingly might. Luffy is so focused on his mission to save his brother that he doesn't even realize he's using one of the most powerful abilities in the world. Luffy pulled off something truly epic, knocking out enemies left and right. But he doesn't really care about the fact that he has awoken something truly amazing within himself. What else could be a bigger flex? <laughs> Enjoying the flexes by the Straw Hat crew? If yes, you can flex your power by smashing that like button and subscribing to our channel. It'll take you just a couple of seconds to do so and will really help us do better in the future. So don't wait till Luffy becomes King of the Pirates. Like and subscribe right now. Appreciate it. Let's enter the top 10. <laughs> Even though Chopper is considered a relatively weaker and rather tiniest member of the Straw Hat Pirates, there were infinite times when this little reindeer proved to be extremely helpful to his crewmates. For instance, when Nami was going to die at the hands of Gumadori, Chopper saved her and after that pushed himself so much that he attained his now iconic form known as Monster Point. Now this form is extremely intimidating and it made Gumadori literally shake. His Gamishibai.exe has stopped working. The dude couldn't attack Chopper and was almost about to piss himself. And my friends, Chopper gave us all a great tutorial on how to swat a fly. After all, Gumadori looked like a fly in comparison to Chopper's glorious monster form. I hope everyone who thinks Chopper is a useless guy had a serious reality check after seeing this scene. Next time someone calls Chopper lame, just remind them of the time he went full monster point and turned Gumadori into a quivering mess. Now that's a hard flex. Look alive because we have one of the most epic fights in the history of One Piece. Luffy is up against Enel, the self-proclaimed god of Skypiea who's practically invincible thanks to his lightning powers. But guess what? Our boy Luffy's body is made of rubber, making him the perfect counter for Enel. Watching Enel's face when his lightning attacks have zero effect on Luffy is pure gold. Seriously, it's the ultimate WTF moment. Enel's god complex takes a massive hit as he goes from I'm invincible to why isn't this working? It was in this moment knew he effed up. Luffy finished him off with his Gomu Gomu no golden rifle using that absurdly large golden ball stuck to his arm. Not only does he absolutely destroy Enel, but he also obliterates his ego. Also, let's not forget the cherry on top. Luffy ringing the ancient bell of Shandora. This not only marks Enel's defeat, but also serves as a giant resonant middle finger to Enel's godly delusions. Remember that iconic shocked Enel meme? Yeah, it was this exact scene.
Moving on, we have another epic battle between Sanji and Page One, an ancient Zoan Devil Fruit user. Now, Page One is one tough cookie who can transform himself into a full or hybrid Spinosaurus at will. Yeah, a freaking dinosaur. Meanwhile, our boy Sanji has just got his raid suit, and it was the perfect opportunity for him to take it for a test drive. He initially took a hit from Page One, and after taking that hit, he kicked Page One so hard that the guy didn't know what hit him. Sanji didn't even let him think for a moment. Sanji's kick was so badass, and it leads us to the conclusion that Sanji never skipped a leg day. I mean, those legs are the stuff of legends. Let's also take a moment to appreciate the animation of this scene. It's absolutely gorgeous. Sanji's movements never look so good and that's what makes his attack look even more badass. And let's be real here, seeing a giant dinosaur get its ass handed to it by a guy in a slick suit is just plain satisfying. Talking about satisfying, nothing's more satisfying than seeing the moss head who's terribly bad at directions in full action and making use of his full powers. Zoro had to face King after being in a real life or death battle against two emperors of the sea. Did he back down? Heck no. He pushed himself beyond his limits, and that's Zoro for you. Remember when Zoro used his conqueror's haki in a refined manner, imbuing it into his swords? Now that was a massive flex. The scene where he coats his sword with his conqueror's haki is nothing short of epic. He combined all his power, haki, and skill into one devastating blow, slicing through King's defenses and ending the fight with style. You can almost hear the collective gasp of One Piece fans around the world with this fight scene. Not the erosion, We're finally going to talk about Robin, the brains of the Straw Hats who's proved time and time again that she's one of the most badass female characters in One Piece. Her fight against Black Maria is a reminder of how dangerously and absolutely badass Robin can be. It's like something out of a nightmare, but in the best way possible. After taking hit after hit from Black Maria and enduring her insulting remarks, Robin finally loses it, turns into a demon and destroys Black Maria. She literally broke her spine. <laughs> Ouch. Black Maria thought she had the upper hand, laughing and taunting Robin like she was some helpless damsel, but that was a big mistake. Robin's Demonio Fleur transformation isn't just a flex, it's a declaration of war. Black Maria learned the hard way that underestimating Robin is a fatal mistake. Robin might be the archaeologist of the crew, but she's also a powerhouse who can turn the tide of any battle. And this fight, it just goes to show why she earned the nickname the Devil Child. I'm really excited for the next one because it's the biggest flex of Luffy in the entire One Piece series so far. It's one of the rarest moments when Luffy acts like an actual captain. So, what did he do? With just a single burst of his conqueror's haki, Luffy knocked out 50,000 fishmen instantly. No punches? No kicks, just pure overwhelming willpower. I bet Hody Jones had to check his own pulse after that one. The remaining fishmen and the new fishmen pirates were all too stunned to speak. After knocking out 50,000 fishmen, he stood there as if it was no big deal. That's classic Luffy. But seriously, it's not every day you see a captain flex so hard without even throwing a punch. Remember when Luffy's crew had to use all they had to take out one fishman in Arlong Park? Yeah, we've come a long way since then, haven't we? All the Straw Hat Pirates are now in a whole new league, especially Luffy. <laughs> Next up, we have one of the most ballsy moves on Jinbei's part.
From joining the Straw Hats cause, Jinbei has come a long way. Jinbei didn't just make some quiet exit, oh no. He stood tall, looked Big Mom square in the eye and dropped the bombshell. He wasn't afraid to give up a few years of his life. And guess what? Big Mom's powers didn't work on him because he wasn't even a bit afraid of her. Seriously, Jinbei is the only character in One Piece who could disrespect someone respectfully. He's setting a new standard for sass in the pirate world. He's the absolute Giga Chad in One Piece because he knew very well that Big Mom would roll him in a fight but still had zero fear in his heart. So yeah, Jinbei's switch from Big Mom's loyal right hand fish man to the Straw Hat's resident badass wasn't just a power move, it was a legendary flex in the world of One Piece. Respect Jinbei, respect. When it comes to one of the most legendary flexes in One Piece, Luffy's fight with Luchi is the one you should look for. But wait, Rob Lucci also awakened his new powers and decided to settle scores with Luffy once and for all. Except Luffy's on another level of rubbery goodness. Lucci was all about, we're not here to play, but gets toyed with by Luffy and ultimately defeated. Imagine not being able to land a single hit on your opponent and being laughed at constantly. <laughs> Yeah, Luchi had to go through all of that thanks to Luffy. Must be a one ego crushing moment, eh? Luffy's Gear 5 Nika moment wasn't just a flex, it was a lesson in not underestimating the power of a determined rubber pirate with a dream. Luchi learned that day that messing with Monkey D. Luffy wasn't a wise idea. It ain't gonna end well for you, matey. Get ready, because we're going to be talking about the best flex of Zoro in the entire One Piece series. Zoro showed all of his fans how absolutely badass and ruthless he is in his fight against Pika. Sure, Pika can merge with and control stone, but hey, for Zoro, cutting and slicing through stone, that's just another day at the office, right? The best part, Zoro's not even breaking a sweat. He's calmly assessing the situation while Pika's desperately trying to hold himself together, literally. After Pika reveals his true form, Zoro cuts through him as well, making it very clear to him that he's the real boss. Pika actually acted as a great canvas for Zoro to work on. He deserves a big round of applause, everyone. On an island far, far away, Dracul Mihawk felt a slight disturbance in the force as he slipped on some sake. <laughs> Jokes aside, this is the best flex of Zoro that you should remember till the end of One Piece comes, if Oda has plans of finishing it, that is. Lastly, the captain of the Straw Hats deserves the top spot when it comes to badass flexes because, let's be real, Luffy's badassery is just on another level. His fight against Kaido is the best one out there and literally shook the entire world. Kaido was actually happy and excited to face Luffy because he finally got to fight someone who could defeat him. After awakening the Gear 5 and turning into Joy Boy, Luffy punched Kaido from the sky, through the bedrock of the earth and into the lava. His Bajaran gun has some ridiculous destructive force. Kaido's epic defeat at the hands of Luffy was such a satisfying moment for all One Piece fans. The animation was top notch like they dumped all the budget into this epic showdown. You could practically feel the hype from your screen. This fight wasn't just about throwing punches, it was a journey through Luffy's growth showing how he went from an ordinary boy to a force to be reckoned with amongst the emperors. Or for that pirate king crown he's been eyeing since day one. And with that, we wrap up this list of the top 20 best flexes of Straw Hat Pirates. Be sure to comment down below any moments or rankings you think should have made this list. If you enjoyed the video, take a look at the top 20 most legendary character introductions in One Piece. See you next time.